uh, the parliament will shift from the old building right behind me to the new building which is right at Jessin. And uh, the transition will happen tomorrow and business will be conducted from Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Now what that business is has got the opposition up in knots and understandably RP Singh because, uh, you know, this is the eighth uh, session, special session, which has been called in the history of uh, the parliament. So if we are talking about 75 years of the parliament's journey, it's just the eighth time that we've called in a special session. What's so special about this session? Because the eight bills that are up for discussion aren't, at least by the looks of it, special. There's something bigger that we are looking at. And parliamentary convention would demand that the opposition be told about that. Considering the last time when it was the GST which came about, they were told. But Piti, uh, you are right, as per you, uh, as a journalist, you are right that you should be inquisitive, you should be digging into it. But fact is, it has been shared, the, the agenda has been shared, and a 75 year journey itself is a special journey. I mean, I don't understand why we are not appreciating that Prime Minister and other leaders of opposition and other leaders also will be speaking on the journey of the parliament. This is such a big occasion. I, even I, I told you, I have my memory. So, so give me a second. So let country know about it, and then shifting of shifting from old parliament to new parliament on Ganesh Chaturthi is another day. So and then if the session is being held, then uh, let there be another four or five other uh, agendas which can be taken care. Of. Uh, the election commission or the uh, advocates bill or the postal bill. I mean these are the add-ons, but the focus is on the journey part. And but I, RP Singh, I'll come. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. I, you know I believe you. If you were to say, and I'm, you know, I believe you if you were to say that uh, it's because the journey part, and I understand it's historic, and I understand why should it not be celebrated. But, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, I'll leave it to journalistic inquisition. I'm going to ask you a question. What the Prime Minister says, decision, historic decision. Decision is not a discussion. Historic discussion would be different. It's, you know, I'm reading into the language of the Prime Minister where he said historic decisions will be made. Now, in that context, one would think that, Clearly, the government has something historic up its sleeve. Well, okay, if I have to expand it like this, the election commission, till now there have been no rule, for, no services rule for them. Uh, it's going to be the election commission is the one of the key pillars of the democracy. And it's acknowledged worldwide, Indian election commission or Indian election process is acknowledged worldwide. And, and if it, uh, there are services rule being laid for that, it's historic in itself. Okay. I mean, if, like, give me a second. Right. If something ha had to be related to judiciary, for example, and, and some decision has to be taken related to judiciary. So if decision is taken, even that is historic, or something related to the parliamentary procedures. So these are few pillars of the democracy, and, and I see election commission as the pillar of the democracy, and that's why it's historic. I, mean, I don't understand why you want to read something between the lines. No, no, I, mean, I don't want to read. Lines, not even the lines. <laughs> lines, I mean, between the, I mean, you're just okay. picking up Can one I... word and trying to expand that Anshul word. Anshul Avijit, nothing, uh, you know, historic in terms of anything new or a rabbit out of the hat. R.P. Singh, Sardar R.P. Singh will have us believe. Why do you not reckon that 75 years of celebrating the Indian Parliament is historic enough? No, no, of course. I mean, I'm also overcome with a wave of nostalgia to to uh, expand on what uh, Mr. Singh is saying, there's no doubt about it. I have wonderful memories of coming here and having lunch in Central Hall and sitting in the galleries and watching the debates go on. I, would, I don't think I'll be able to do that again uh, because probably we'll go there. It's turning into a museum, I believe. Uh, so we'll probably go there and look at parliamentary artifacts and we'll have to go to the new museum. We all remember Meera Kamarji. We used to conduct the complete... We remember Meera Kamarji, the way she used to conduct the complete... No, I... No, no, the way she used to conduct the Lok Sabha and her sweet voice bad I mean, I mean that still is in, in, in our ears I mean, I mean as a student as a, as a young child I can't forget those words so these this is yeah, I hope thing. she's watching you know she'll be very I'm happy saying to so. yeah, no, yeah. No, no. So, I mean, it is here yeah uh, she's part of the popular culture. You know, there, yeah, are, there are multiple yeah. memes that have been made out of that. Yeah, 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 I know, and I've seen them. She's seen <laughs> yeah. them too. She enjoys she's seen them, them very much. She enjoys them. <laughs> yeah, she does. So that's all there. Yeah, I, I do understand it. I mean, it is nostalgic. Right. We are leaving behind an institution and going to another one. Um, yeah, but, you know, the moot questions that we began with remain, therefore, unanswered. So we can do this. We have enough time for nostalgia. Um, nostalgia, is, they say, is eternal. So we keep talking about how we miss the old parliament and the recounting the stories. I'd love to hear more, Mr. Singh, about your uh, you know, interaction with the parliament. But uh, you know, the basic questions, the foundational questions that we began with before the session remain unanswered. And we still have to ask, that's a part of parliamentary procedure as well. That will go down in history as well. 
that yes, you called for a special session, yet we didn't know about it. Yes, you had this, uh, this kind of talk about recounting of history, uh, rhetorical or otherwise, which needed to be done. I can understand it. It's not a formality. The parliament belongs to everyone. It belongs to Indian democracy. We understand the need for that. We also under the, understand the need for clarity and transparency, right. which is the hallmark but of But he's our saying you've been given it. RP saying, sir, Wednesday, ko agar aap, if you come on our show and there is something special which has happened, which is extraordinary. Ah. RP Singh, sir, so, I will ask you that so question Piti, again. Piti, if something special is going to happen, that will discuss in advance with the opposition. There's nothing like that. Some okay. bomb will happen. It's a procedure. No, no, they love having... Uh, can, 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 another, another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a parliamentary procedure. And then obviously, the leader of the opposition will call uh, by the, in, the, in the given time, whatever time is required, and then it will discuss. And then it will be brought to the parliament. There's nothing wrong in it. But again, I, 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 I humbly request... Let's, let's enjoy this, let's uh, understand this. Prime Minister has said, let's keep this in a good flavor. Okay. Not, let's not take it to tutu of, of, of the uh, routine. I mean, I understand there are issues which opposition has. I appreciate those issues also. But those were discussed in last session, this can be discussed in future sessions also. Okay. But, but this session, let's go with positive mood and, and with good notes. Fair enough. Okay, uh, Anshul Abhijit, please respond and I'll bring in my colleague uh, Polumi into this conversation. No, no, I, I understand the Prime Minister said ki ye rona dhona band karo. I think ye utsa aur umang aur jash manana chahiye. Regrettably, the Prime Minister hasn't set the trend for that uh, in earlier speeches. I mean, they've been particularly vicious in that sense. So we can't switch on and off. Um, you know, there is a particular agenda. We don't know what that agenda is. There is a veil of secrecy that still remains of that. And yes, the nostalgia trip will go on. I have many, multiple stories to recount. We'll all share them time and again. But we can't let go of the real foundational issues which are confronting this nation, okay. you know. I want to bring in my colleague, Polumi uh, Saha, into this conversation. Polumi, uh, you know, as uh, reporters who like to cover politics, let's you know get into a bit of political kite flying as of now. Uh, what can be expected? There's so much which has come and gone uh, over the last two weeks ever since uh, a special joint session was called by the government, you know, right from uh, Uniform Civil Code, Women's Reservation Bill, uh, One Nation, One Poll, uh, you know, a referendum on Bharat to India. Uh, we've seen it all. Uh, I would reckon right now, at least the opposition seems to anticipate the Women's Reservation Bill. Therefore, uh, you know, preempting it and already stating that uh, a women reservation, it's time for the, you know, the time for women reservation has come. That's right. Uh, you know, the buzz around uh, women's reservation bail is definitely growing. That's something that, um, you know, I asked Kay Kapita as well over the weekend when I interviewed her because she, in fact, was on a hunger strike in March in uh, Jantar Mantar uh, demanding the women's uh, reservation bail. And very interestingly, K. Chandrasekhar Rao, the chief minister of the state of Telangana, wrote to the prime minister over the weekend as well uh, in order to, in fact, uh, seek his cooperation to bring uh, in women's uh, reservation in a uh, Parliament and in state legislative assembly. So he sought that that bill be introduced, which has been basically on the back burner uh, and has gone into cold storage uh, since 2010. So that is uh, the, the buzz is around that. And like you rightly said, the opposition probably trying to preempt uh, that as well when most of them raise their voices in favor of the women's reservation bill at the government all party, uh, government call all party meeting yesterday as uh, well. So uh, there is a lot of buzz around the women's reservation bill. Most of the other theories, including One Nation, One Election, uh, or, uh, you know, snap polls uh, uh, as far as general elections are concerned, or for that matter, UCC, they've been dismissed, uh, you know, quite vehemently and categorically by sources that I've been speaking with. Uh, there's only been some amount of... Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe, maybe not uh, around women's reservation bill and, of course, uh, OBC uh, subcategorization. But as far as that is concerned, the latter is concerned, we know that it was only on the 1st of August that the Justice Rowney Commission submitted its uh, uh, draft report, its report to, in fact, uh, the president and from the president it's reached the social justice uh, department. So they'll be studying it in much greater detail before, of course, preparing a bill based on that report. So that is also uh, a 
little bit on the unlikely spectrum. But as far as women's reservation is concerned, yes, the buzz around that has been growing uh, maximum. There's a lot of support that's coming in. The India Bloc wholeheartedly called for it uh, in the meeting yesterday. And the BJP, you, you, you know, has mentioned uh, the women's reservation bill as one of its agendas in its election manifestos of 2014 and 2019. And we do know that one by one, the BJP is, of course, fulfilling each of these items that it has specified in its election manifestos, be it, of course, uh, you know, uh, the Ram Mandir in Ayodhya or UCC, for which a committee now has been formed under the chairmanship of former President Ramnath Kovin. Women's Reservation Bill also is a commitment that the BJP made in its election manifestos of 2014 right. and 2019. The Prime Minister spoke about the contribution of women today in Parliament as well, saying 600 women parliamentarians have contributed to our parliamentary democracy over these many years, over the last 75 years. So, again, there was a little bit of a clue over there as well. But, yes, women's reservation, possibly uh, the biggest buzz around this particular bill. Well, and the opposition seemed to have preempted that uh, because, uh, well, as a vote bank, uh, always been solidly behind the Prime Minister from 2014, but uh, there have been other opposition leaders that have also seen uh, the power of the woman vote. You know, something that I always say, always the king maker, never quite the king, but will the women reservation bill make that difference? Hanging fire cleared uh, by the Rajya Sabha in 2010 and sitting in Lok Sabha ever since. There's never been any intent that we have seen 